So I tried to capture it all into one slide. I've heard <laughs> TED Talks should be under 18 minutes, right? Well, <clears throat> evolution produced life. Life produced artifacts. And artifacts either facilitates or regulates innovation. Or like Winston Churchill said, we shape our buildings, and afterwards our buildings shape us. Now, artifacts can be either tangible things, like tools, and uh, they can be like the Voyager space probe, or like this slide here, shaping you, shaping me. They can also be ideational creations, like the Big Bang Theory, or something more down to earth, like uh, politics, or the organizational model governing your workplace. Um, artifacts can be beneficial to humanity or not. Or they can be a bit in between, depending on how you value long-term, short-term, egoistic or altruistic outcomes. So um, that leaves us with a choice between different alternatives. And uh, for that, we need priority setting to make decisions. And for that, we need to have a vision. So what could then be an attractive vision for humans to have in order to do the right thing? Could it be a sustainable way of living? Because um, social, economic, and environmental sustainability as guiding values could be attractive even from an egoistic point of view, since it's a matter of survival. Uh, so we need to organize around values. But we also need to organize in a way which allows us to deal with change. And for that reason, I'm actually going to change slide to practice a bit what I'm talking about here. Nothing happens. There is no change in my life. <laughs> no, there is. Because change is the only constant. This wise man said 2,500 years ago, and his name was Heraclitus a Greek philosopher known for his doctrine of change being central to the universe. Everything flows, nothing stands still, and nothing endures but change. So, wisdom comes with age, as we can see in this artwork. But uh, nature has far more age than a single human being. So, let's study nature. Okay, how does nature organize and innovate? Well, we have survived through millions of years by just adopting nature's own way of organizing complex adaptive systems. It's called self-organization. And, uh, well, what does it read here? Self-organization allows the organization to be reinvented and modified at a macro level of the system by letting individual components prioritize and make decisions at the micro level of the system. Well, that's a bit of a jargon. It's another way to describe direct democracy, perhaps. Um, one can, of course, influence individual priorities in such a system by communicating an attractive vision and uh, to be an attractive agent in this system or outside of the system uh, in one way or another. Um, and, well, perhaps we have a vision we want to survive. Now, that is not the most easy thing, though, in a complex environment full of change and politics. So, um, for that reason, nature has also provided us with a self-organizing system inside our head, our brain, where our neural networks can form structures and learn to recognize complex patterns that we have around us. But not only that, not only step-by-step -step rational logic. When being randomly exposed to information, it also had the capability to form lateral path between connections and allow for creative thinking to generate abstract associations, fantasy, dreams, and uh, to bring us new insights. So with this creativity, Man has been able to go from being man the hunted to become man the hunter, or you can replace that with a woman, if you like. Uh, but 
we were able to shape na natural objects into tools and artifacts. So, as I said, artifacts can be either beneficial to humanity or not, or, well, at least, they can be reinvented and improved. So, as hunters and gatherers, we lived in small tribes. Um, that was practical, since we had to constantly move and follow the food in our foraging way of life. But um, mobility also requires the minimization of material possessions, not to carry around too many stuff. And that <clears throat> resulted in that there was no surplus of resources being accumulated to any single member in the tribe, and that resulted in an egalitarian social structure. So full-time leadership, bureaucracy, are rarely supported by this type of society. Collective ownership, nature belongs to all. At least, it did for a while. Because then we had the invention of bureaucracy with agriculture. Some 10,000 years ago, we became sedentary and we created a bureaucracy by the division of labor, specialization, Excellence culture, status ranking, private ownership, slavery, war and trade over material and later even immaterial property. Now, this is an artifact. Organization as an artifact. The bureaucratic model of militant kingdoms was inherited into the church and then into the universities, which grew up around the cathedrals, and then into the factories, and over to the modern public governance and corporate life. So it was designed for effective industrial outputs and not for creative thinking and self-organized collaboration. So it seems like this bureaucratic model needs to be a bit reprogrammed and upgraded in order to fit with our modern society. It doesn't really seem to serve intelligent, well-educated citizens who are educated people who are becoming increasingly more mobile and interacting and who demand democracy and influence and who wants to have an inspiring work life. And, you know, there is a famous quote by the father of scientific management, Frederick Winslow Taylor, he said that uh, all possible brain work should be removed from the industry shop floor and centered in the planning department. It looks like this, perhaps. Now we are moving away from this model now. Um, we are bringing back the survival strategies of hunters and gatherers, basically. Self-organizing through brain power and uh, distributed networks and uh, open innovation transparent collaboration, collective ownership. These are emerging features of our society. So these models, if you have a nerd interest in this, they go under the umbrella of Agile. We have things like Lean, Atern, and Scrum. And uh, what can we do with that? Well, they emerged as a direct response to the need to be able to deal with the accelerating waves of innovation, described here by Kondratiev, people like Joseph Schumpeter, Raymond Kurzweil, probably you heard of. And uh, they are also a result of the need to deal with modern communication systems and software development. As we see here, we have moved away from centralized communication network structures over to distributed network structures like the internet, which allows for multilateral communication, self-organization, and uh, distribution of information, which in turn distributes power. So, how do we survive and operate in this kind of modern business landscape, which is more turbulent? Well, there are modern enterprises who use something which is called fractal organization. They imitate nature's own way to organize complex systems, like a workplace. And um, you see self-similarity here at all levels, this system. 
because fractal organizations can harness the power of individual agile team and replicate their key benefits up to higher levels of the system. So this is one approach here. So dinosaurs can't dance to the post-industrial swing. We see how traditional bureaucracies now makes companies and even whole countries now go bankrupt in this high-speed globalized economy. Because they cannot react quickly enough to change, they cannot adapt to new paradigms of innovation. So, what's the story of the coming decades, the coming waves of innovation? Well, I found this on the internet. It was Creative Commons material. I like it. And uh, this guy has mapped a couple of um, key areas of technological development and uh, put out expected milestones to come towards the year of 2040. And the question is where interdisciplinary collaborations will form new fields of innovation here. And there is a huge interest internationally now for the convergence of nanotechnology, biotechnology, infotechnology, and cognitive sciences for emerging innovations. And uh, there is an interest, I hope, to improve conditions for humanity with this. And it also requires a lot of materials research because you have from implants to uh, medicine to the building we sit in, the mobile phones you carry around with you, the fuel in your cars, the cables transporting electricity to your house, all of this is about materials. And uh, societies today invest a lot in uh, building facilities for materials research. We have here in Sweden, for example, in the city of Lund here, 17 European nations now collaborating to build a material science facility for studying atomic structures in materials with neutrons, the European spallation source. And this facility will disseminate knowledge into the innovation systems around the world over the coming decades. And uh, materials science is a key to product innovation today and to develop eco-friendly technology. I have also an example here when it comes to organizing for innovation and uh, for interdisciplinary collaboration. We call it Next Community, where different actors from different sectors in society here now can start to share open data and co-develop open source tools for collaboration. And in this case with Next Community, the idea is to appify the region, we say. We can see the region and its infrastructure as the processor architecture and uh, how can we in a smart way make these organizations operate as a software for innovation. And, uh, make it easier for people to interact around the investments on the input side of the innovation system and generate a better outcome for entrepreneurs on the output side of the innovation system. So we like to see this as a workspace between workplaces. This is where innovation arises and disseminates into society. This is where we also are interested to give this workspace a tool for these different sectors. And uh, I would now like to uh, end my presentation. And uh, I hope I have inspired you to some new forms for creative collaboration. And uh, with that, I would like to again quote Winston Churchill. We shape our buildings, and afterwards, our buildings shape us. Thank you.